as well. Thank you. Bahrain is a key ally of the West in its confrontation with Iran, but there have been a wave of arrests in the kingdom since August, with Shia activists accused of campaigning against the ruling family. One of those arrested is a British citizen, Jafar al-Hassabi, who has dual nationality. He's being held on charges of plotting to overthrow the government and could face the death penalty. He claims to have been tortured by Bahraini officials, and his wife has told Newsnight she believes the Foreign Office has held off doing more to secure his release because of British interests in the region. Tim Hewell reports. Night after night, fires of protest are burning across a tiny island at the heart of one of the most combustible regions on Earth. Bahrain in the Gulf has for years been home to America's fifth fleet. It's a vital ally of the West in its confrontation with Iran. It's a particularly close friend of Britain. But now Britain's in a difficult position. With its encouragement, Bahrain's been moving towards greater democracy, but not fast enough for these protesters. Now, scores of pro-democracy activists have been arrested, and it's alleged some have been tortured, including one, Jafar al-Hassabi, who's a British citizen. Uh, Jafar's hand, uh, the right one, uh, the skin is removed and it was clear that he was tied from both hands and hang to the ceiling. And they did not allow him to sleep for five days. He said whenever he fell down, whenever he tried to sleep, they would start screaming. Jafar al-Hassabi's wife says the British authorities aren't doing enough to help him. I feel they don't want there to be a confrontation between them and the Bahraini government. They've abandoned a simple and helpless person like my husband because of British interests in the region. Al Hassabi, a minicab driver, has campaigned against the Bahraini government in London since he came here 15 years ago and was later granted asylum. But this summer, he went back to Bahrain on holiday. Talk of further reform made him feel safe, but he was arrested, charged with seeking to overthrow the government. The Foreign Office says it's very concerned about the torture claims. It pressed for embassy staff to meet Jafar al-Hassabi, but they were denied access at first because he's a Bahraini as well as a British national. It was only last week, a full month after Mr al-Hassabi's arrest, that embassy staff finally got to see him. That came immediately after the Foreign Secretary, William Hague, raised his case directly in a phone call with Bahrain's Crown Prince. Bahrain's powerful royal family has close ties with Britain, the island's colonial protector until 1971. So could Britain have used its undoubted influence earlier and more energetically in this case? Certainly it's been interesting that we haven't heard much of an outcry from the US or the UK uh, about the human rights issues that have been raised in this recent crackdown. That surely ties into the Iranian situation. It also ties into the fact that the American push for, the democracy, for democracy in the region has basically gone away. As Newsnight reported earlier this week, Gulf states are now being heavily armed by America against an ever more assertive Iran. And traditional Sunni Muslim rulers like Bahrain's are worried that more democracy would mean more power for Shiites. Bahrain, like Iran and Iraq, has a Shia majority. Yemen, Kuwait and the eastern province of Saudi Arabia have substantial Shia minorities. Pro-democracy protesters in Bahrain are mainly Shiites, angry at what they say is continuing discrimination against them. But the government says it has evidence of a sophisticated network inside and outside the country instructed to commit terrorist acts. It told Newsnight that all those it's arrested have been and will be treated according to international human rights standards. But there's proof of the torture of some detained in the past year, according to a London-based activist who's been charged with leading the alleged terrorist network. The, the ruling family does not want political reform in the sense that the world knows this. What they want is uh, authoritarian dictatorship, uh, camouflaged with words such as the parliament, democracy, uh, elections, and they would want to convince the world that elections themselves constitute democracy. 
the wife of the alleged torture victim, Jafar al-Hasabi, has come back to London where their children are at school, but the family knows he may face the death penalty. We were all very upset, it's very hard, because my mum doesn't know any English, she's not working, and she has to look after five children, so it's quite difficult. How much Britain's quiet diplomacy can help them isn't yet clear. Tim Hill there. I'm just having a look through some of the front pages uh, tomorrow for you. The Guardian has got the two Milibands. David Miliband will work for Ed if he loses, but...